Okay, hello. Yes, this works. Uh, second attempt because the first one it blocked me because I didn't have two factor authentication, which I don't even know if it's a fail or a victory. Um, okay, now let's just quickly check on Twitch that it's, still, that it's actually working. It is. Um, colors are terrible, but. Hmm. Uh, and uh, the lag is just a couple seconds, so that's good, that's good. Um, give me one second to tweet about this, and if anybody's already around, feel free to mention it in chat. All right, the important part is done, tweeting. <laughs> I'll switch to the terminal in a second. Last couple bits of self promotions. I've got a couple slacks to to tell about this. After this, I can't really see Twitter, so if you want to talk to me, I do have a little box with the Twitch chat there. And definitely feel free to uh, stop me, ask questions, point out things. Uh, when I was live coding CryptoPals, people would find uh, bugs in my code all the time, and it's useful. Also because I'm not sure who I will find to review this code, so you know, the more... Uh, Live review I can get the better. All right, and let's do it. Okay, if somebody from chat could confirm that you can see both my uh, the doc and my ed my terminal, and if I do this, you can see the code and that. Perfect. Okay, 
again, um, if there's anything about production quality, the, the audio, I have microphone over here or uh, font size or anything that I, sh I should adapt, um, let me know. Now, all right, to catch up from yesterday, um, hopefully now that I've slept uh, some more, this will make more sense. The, what I was implementing yesterday was the uh, stream encryption. Uh, stream is fairly simple. Um, it's the actual encryption for the payload of um, AGE messages. Um, here, good link is here. And the idea is super simple. You take uh, AAD like ASGCM or Chacha 20 pol 1305 and to encrypt multiple chunks, you just you put a counter in the nonce, and apparently that's um, probably secure. And for the last chunk, you set a flag to one, and that way you know which one is the last chunk, and the message can't be truncated by an attacker without you noticing. Um, which, for example, if you can, can mean that you can abort the um, processing or skip that. Now, the specific flavor of it that I'm implementing doesn't have um, any nonce um, prefix because it's this. Um, basically, we take HKDF, we derive a key from the file key and encrypt uh, with, with stream with that. And we nonce, mm, we salt the HKDF, so we don't have to apply the um, random prefix to the uh, nonce itself. Now, uh, yesterday I wrote just the reader. Uh, so here, uh, it's pretty simple. You make a new reader that wraps a ciphertext reader, which would be like a file or something coming from the format package. We can see that later. And with a key, it instantiates a Chacha 20 pol 1305. Um, boring, boring, boring. And then for each read, it will first check if it has uh, buffered uh, decrypted chunks or if there was a fatal error. Then as long as it still has to read something from the, for the input, it will read a new chunk, uh, pour it into the output and uh, remembering that that part was already read and then if if that's not enough because there, there is still space in the output it will read another chunk etc etc if it finds the last chunk it will set the error to um, um, set the error to EOF because that's the end of the end of the stream break out and break because this way it will um, why did I make it break here? Hmm. I made it break here because, um, oh yes, of course, because this was the last uh, chunk. So there is no point in wrapping around again to, to go here uh, to read another uh, chunk because again, this was the last one. And since it sets, uh, R dot, uh, uh, the error here, it will never hit this loop again. Um, made it break also because if this, um, if there was still some stuff in unread, because here P was shorter than unread, then the stuff in unread needs to be um, read by the next call uh, to read before we return EOF. That's why it doesn't return EOF on the spot. So the next time it will first drain the, the rest of the unread buffer and then it will return the error. Right, I'm almost convinced this is correct. Then read chunk. Uh, read chunk does a read full uh, into the buffer, which is of the size um, chunk size plus um, plus the overhead, which is the authentication tag. 
and there's a switch there we go that if the message ends without a last block that's not supposed to happen so error out if the um, if the chunk is short it might still be fine we just it just has to be the last block so we set the last block flag and carry on um, and if there's any other error it returns it then it tries to decrypt the chunk because again here we are using um, AEAD so um, encryption cipher that does also authentication for each chunk so that we can both seek into the message so that we don't have to store the entire file in memory to decrypt it um, if we have a one gigabyte file we can't just put it all in memory and pass it all to open at once so we have to chunk it up and once we chunk it up we don't want the chunks to be rearrangeable or truncatable so we use the counter in the nonce to make sure that they have to be read in the right order and the, this flag in the last uh, uh, chunk so that we know it's the last one um, if there is an error opening and we are not already trying to decrypt the last, let's try setting the last flag and trying it again, which I kind of hate, uh, but eh. Um, and then if there is there still an error, we, we return it. And finally, we increment the, the nonce start, since it's big endian, we start from the rightmost one, and as soon as one doesn't wrap uh, around that's um we incremented this this long uh, 11 bytes thing and then we make it available for and read and return okay i actually think this might be correct or at least it will be correct until we write some tests Um, from the chat, um, rather than calling read chunk multiple times to fill the whole buffer, so here, um, why not do a short read? Yeah, uh, that's an option. Um, we could not have this for loop and only read up to a chunk, um, uh, a chunk per time. Um, chunks are pretty big. Then that may actually be uh, worth it. Yeah, nobody's going to be, uh, be reading more than 64 kilobytes um, uh, at a time. So actually, I might like this. Might simplify this code. Yeah. Also, um, there's a question of why is there this um, uh, if. That's because once an error happens, uh, we want to persist it here. Because with these stateful readers, um, we could try to figure out whether it's a recoverable error, but it's a can of worms. Um, and yeah, I'm not a fan uh, of... Uh, oh, that's... Yep, yep, thank you. <laughs> it was a equal equal nil instead of a different from nil. That would have been fun to debug. Thank you. Um, yep. Um, let me think for one more second about removing this for loop. So we just um, read a chunk, do a copy. If it's the last, we set this uh, just the same. Yeah. Yeah, let's try this out. Um, so we still do this part, of course. Uh, we read the chunk. Um, there is no total. Uh, this is nice, we don't have to track this. 
So in this case, it would be zero because if there's an error reading the chunk, if we had read something from here, it would have returned from here. So we haven't touched P at this point. Uh, then we still do the copy. Uh, we still advance the unread. We don't have to keep track of this. We don't have to keep track of this. It's nice. Um, if it's the last, we still set EOF and then we return N and nil. Yeah. And once it's the last, it will set this, then finish pouring out the, the chunk the next time. Oh, we need to check for uh, length of P being zero, don't we? Um, if the length of P is zero here, it will still read a chunk even if p is zero, which I suppose is not something we want. Um, so first we do this, then we do this, then we check. But that's just boilerplate, it's fine. Um, still from the chat, um, also if you invert the cases, so if len unread equal equal zero, um, then do the read chunk, then you can fall through to the copy branch rather than returning early. I'm not sure I want to do this because this part has the last logic and it feels like it should be more of the core and I like to know that if there is an unread buffer this function all it will do is or then read the buff um, buffer and return. It's a nice invariant to uh, to have in my head, but it's I think it's just um, preference here. Okay, so this should still work, I think, and it's more readable. Nice. Okay, now uh, we have stream reader. Let's make a stream writer. Um, how does a stream writer work? Uh, a stream writer will need to buffer up a chunk worth of stuff. Um, once it has more than a chunk worth, because it can't know whether it's the last one until it has one chunk plus one byte, then write it out. And then it needs a close uh, method that you have to call to flush the rest, the, the last block. Yeah. Um, that means it needs a buffer uh, of chunk size. Um, and a slice of unwritten backed by buff. Um, I like this trick because it allows us to use the go um, by slices for, instead of keeping track of offsets and pointers and stuff like that, uh, but it still allows us to allocate the buffer within the structure so we don't actually have any allocations. Um, of course, it will need a destination, uh, io.writer. Um, what else? Oh, and it needs to know if it's closed, I suppose. So it can stop returning. Then, uh, 
Dun, 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 dun. A simple new writer function, uh, which will need mm, just the key and the destination. And return some IO writer. Uh, do we want. Uh, no, not IO writer. Uh, return some pointer to the writer. Take interfaces, return uh, concrete types. Uh, this will need some docs anyway. Um, later. Uh, Oh, and of course, it's going to need a Ooh, source is a much better name for C here. Mm. I'm told from chat that there's a humming noise and my server touches the, the desk, so maybe it's that. Did it stop? Um. Oh wow, it was actually the server? <laughs> Fun. Um, sound propagates. Okay. Yeah, I have a server sitting right there, which um, for example, hosts uh, my copy of GitHub, which is, yeah. Um, where were we? Um, right, right. Uh, we need to know what a IO writer is like. Oh, we need this window to be a little more centered. <laughs> I'm being asked uh, uh, why no syntax highlighting. It's just what I'm used to. Um, and uh, what is the purpose of public struct types if you can't make useful instances of them outside the package? Oh, um, they're still useful because you can add methods um, to them if you realize later that you need something. Uh, a good example is the ChaCha cipher. Um, I it implements the cipher.stream interface. So I could have made a new ChaCha return a cipher.stream, but then somebody came along and uh, like later on, maybe imagine this happened after we had already shipped the API and said, yeah, but I need to set the counter um, to jump ahead. And now you can't because uh, io. Do, uh, sorry, um, cipher.stream does not have a set counter uh, method. So instead, if you have a public um, struct that you return instead, you just add a method and carry on. Um, you can imagine here it might be something like set chunk size, which would not actually work here, but you can imagine like something like that. Um, Oh, right. Um, also, I think we can rename this source. Okay. Mm. And then we need the A cipher AD. And we need this stuff. I 
I kind of hate uh, introducing like an error for something this trivial, but eh. Uh, okay. Next, um, what's the logic in write? Uh, if we we could try to save a copy by eh nah. So first we copy into the buffer. Oh, thanks. Um, so first we copy in the stuff into a buffer. If we run out of buffer and we still have data, I guess we just first make a, f a function that is um, flush chunk. We'll need that for sure. Um, Wait. Ah, yes, uh, it will be like this. So if it's the last, um, Uh, should have made this buffer bigger, shouldn't I? Yeah, so that it's... There we go. So that we can do in place encryption and then write out that. <coughs> uh, if it's the last one, we set the last block flag. Ooh, we are going to need that. as well as error. Um. Okay, so if this is the last, um, we set the last block flag, the increment nonce we can do later, but we can also just move it out I've never exposed this in a public API, but eh, for a private one, might as well use the type safety. Uh, and since we're doing this,
So now we should have the correct nonce at this point, uh, which means seal should succeed. Let's just reread the seal docs just to be sure. Uh, Use point of zeros there, otherwise the remaining capacity of this mode. Yep, yep, yep. It's an append API. Uh, does it return an error? Nope, it doesn't. So, mm, mm, destination is. Uh, uh, Just w dot buff as a slice sliced to zero though. Ooh, am I doing this right in open? Yes. Um, what were the others? Um, nonce plain text and additional data. Nonce is just w dot nonce as a slice. Plain text is w dot unwritten, which we know is going to start at the same place as w dot buff, so it's going to be fine, and there is no additional data. Um, then, once we have this, it's time to write it. Actually, at that point, we might as well always reset the unwritten buffer. Like at this point, unwritten should be reset to or even nil. Yeah, I'll think about that later. And then we increase the nose and return the error directly. If there is an error, nothing will matter because if there's an error writing, we like we just bail out and never let this be used again. Um, while Yeah. Yeah. Um, this gets reset. Um, let's see how it feels like using it in write. That's probably what will make the difference. Okay, right. Uh, There is no flushing a buffer in this case. Uh, if an error happened while writing, this is it forever. Um, and if length of P is zero, we don't want to cause any side effects. So let's just handle it here. At this point, this means that we have some stuff we are ready to copy it into the buffer. Hmm. How do we decide how much to copy without doing arithmetic, which I would like to avoid? Unwritten, maybe could have the capacity set to just chunk size. Maybe something like this. Mm. 
No, wait, this is a bad idea. It, we risk getting it um, reallocated. Let's not do that. Um, No, I think we, we need um, to do arithmetic here. If anybody can think of a way to not do that, let me know. Um, Okay, uh, then it's uh, chunk size minus length on written. If and we start by copying up to that much. How do we do that? Um, I hate this. There should be a way to. Hmm. I don't like it. Ideally, I want a slice of the free buffer. Should be using a byte stop buffer. This is kind of what they're for. Mm. But then this function would get significantly more complicated. Um. Let's just do the arithmetic. Um, so three is chunk size minus uh, len unwritten and um, free buff is um, w dot uh, buff. Um, Um, up to from length of w unwritten to uh, this is horrible We can't do short writes, so we have to actually handle the case in which n is multiple chunks. Oh god, this is horrible. I thought implementing stream would be fun. Actually, it's a pain. Mm. Mm. 
All right, for loop it is. Yeah, maybe this is a place for a bytes dot buffer. Yeah. But I don't like that then I can't do in place encryption in uh, the chunking thing. Like three copies just on the way out feels a little much. Do, do, do. Let's just slap a to do in here. Like, we only have today to write the whole thing. Let's not spend mm, most of the day writing a perfect uh, implementation of stream. Um, okay. As long as we have more than, um, we still have P, uh, we do this stuff. Uh, yes. Are we supposed to return something else than zero here? I suppose we are, but at the same time, that's not really a thing with writers. You can't really recover. Mm, and I don't know what to return because who knows what this wrote and how does that relate to how much of our chunk? Nah. Um, how much of the plain text? Nah. Okay. Um, so we flush the chunk if we have to here, and then we, if not, we loop around, uh, at which point there will be more free space, assumingly like a whole buffer, and if there's enough space for everything, it will get all poured out into it. Um, and if we stop right at the end, we will hit this, but not this. And the next time we enter this function, three will be zero. This will be at zero length um, slice. This will be zero. This will do nothing. This will do nothing. 
and then this will hit and it will be true this time so it will flush and then go around again and actually move forward. This was slightly less painful than I expected it to be, honestly. This might work. I think. All right, finally, a close function. Which I think just... And this should never be empty. Uh, well, I guess if you call close immediately, this does not work with zero length messages. Maybe should. Ugh. Aside from that, um, flush is only called when there is more P available, which means that more stuff will get copied into the newly free buffer. Yes. Yeah, from chat, what happens if you write an exact multiple of chunk size and then call close? I think I got this right. Um, you hit this, you do a copy that is exactly chunk size. This becomes a full buffer. So this is true, but then this is false because it was an exact multiple of uh, in chunk size. So this became zero. And so flush does not happen. Um, this bails out, we return, we did not actually write anything for the last chunk, and then we write the last chunk here. Um, yep. is useless. Is it supposed to be okay to call close multiple times? Yeah, um, 
This works except for the cases of actually zero length messages, which I don't even know what we should do about. Are you even supposed to be able to write a zero length age message? The answer has to be yes, right? I mean, the way to solve that is that we just remove this and I think it just all works. Because the only case in which you can get close with an empty um, buffer is... Yeah. All right. Yeah, the only way to reach to, to make a zero length chunk happen is uh, by doing that. And I wonder if it's gonna work here, but the best way to do that is to write some tests. And then we'll have spent a whole hour on writing stream and we can move on. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting a phone call, hold on. Um, I have a colleague that has this um, fantastic theory that all tests should be um, external tests, X tests, where there are se uh, separate package, so you can only use the public uh, APIs. And if you really need um, uh, in access to internals uh, to write your tests, you should write another test file, uh, underscore test.go, uh, which is instead, for in this case, uh, package stream, and uh, use that to expose what you need as a public API, which will only be available to yourself while writing tests, so that you can know exactly what behaviors you are testing, and uh, so that you're not uh, going to, you know, when you refactor code and you know it's correct, but now the tests break because you changed how the fields work internally or something like that. And I love it, uh, like this clear separation and clear interface that you expose to your own tests. I've been trying to convince him to write a blog post about this for so long. I'll just write it for him at some point. Now, um, table test, probably. Um, some messages of various sizes, uh, we chunk them, we feed them with various uh, step sizes into read and write and make sure that they round trip and we leave 
testing the errors for another time. Yeah, it's not like I, I will write the entire thing with all the tests um, uh, that soon. We could do fuzzing and I have fuzzing for uh, another component, but last time I went down the rabbit hole of fuzzing, I spent the entire weekend just writing a beautiful fuzzer that checks that there is no uh, malleability in the format and let's not do that. Um. Wasn't there a way to auto generate these? False. This is a lie. This is at the same time cool and not something I, I care for right now. All right, neat. <laughs> Don't care about this. Um. Uh, what is actually relevant? Just the lengths, right? We should also probably test reading zero after each section um, and writing zero after it, each section, um, just to be sure it doesn't change anything. But yes, um, Actually, yeah, there's no need for a table here. Uh, we can just have a bunch of lengths, uh, which should probably be zero, uh, 10, uh, stream dot chunk size. Um, Chunk size plus one. This might actually be good.
this uh, the package level read of crypto rand is safe to use like this because it's a uh, uh, read full automatically um, so you don't have to worry about short reads there are a little too many conditions to hit that safe case in my opinion but eh, such is life um What's the chunk size again? Right. This should probably be a little large. Um, So we start with the writer. Um, ah, we start with a key. That's not a thing, is it? No, it is. Nah. Okay, now we need to decide in which um sizes we're going to mm, in which sizes we're going to copy it uh into it um Uh, I'm thinking maybe we use a bytes buffer as well. This is a test. I shouldn't be thinking this long about a test. Um, length of uh, source minus n and then mm, we can write in a tangent 24 uh, by chunks why not uh, 
maybe even 512. This one would need to make uh, parameterizable at some point, but the tests can be made much better. Um, Okay, um, and then why not? Okay, um, so this will write it in chunks. Sometimes they will hit the, uh, they will always hit the chunk size, well, they're not. Oh, uh, that's not a good test. It's not a good test if it never hits the chunk size either. So, For now, let's test this. It's 1 p.m. I need to move on from this. Okay, uh, at this point, Len SRC is nothing else than length, right? So I we'll use that. Okay, so now we should have written, oh, and we need to call close. At this point, we should have the stuff we want um, in there, uh, and it's time to read it, read it back out, and make sure that um, it matches. Actually, first let's run this. It's not even obvious if we run <laughs> like this. Um, It's not a great place for it to crash. Uh. So the slice has kept. I know, I know, I know. 
I remember thinking I need to remember to do that. I'm going to forget to do that. And guess what? Ah, there's not something you can do at all. I promise we'll get to some interesting cryptography at some point. Once we're past this um, bytes shuffling. Woo! It can write something. We don't know if it's the right thing, but it can write something. Question about the pronunciation of um, Age. I have an answer for this. Um, Age is pronounced like um, the root of the word raise in Japanese. So, uh, no, 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 that was the wrong button. Age. That. <laughs> because it's a tech tool and it has a G in it. It needs a you know, controversial uh, pronunciation. <laughs> Um, is it controversial pronunciation if you tell people the answer though? Yes, yes, of course it is. <laughs> people will have opinions. <laughs> Ooh, it's also the net slang for bumping a thread in Japanese. I love this. Thank you. Uh, I love it. Okay. Enough bullshitting about, uh, about this. Uh, I'm Curious to change this just for for a try. Um, um, and just to make sure. This still works. It does. Um, ah, fuck it. This is very easy to parameterize. Let's parameterize it. Uh, Thanks for reminding me to change the banner. And then we can just make this. Mm, but then 
this became unwieldy, so let's just move it out here. is not going to work um, right Is this how programming in Lisp feels like? There we go. Nice. Next, reading it back and making sure it's actually something useful. Not obvious. Um, This is horribly allocating every time, but I don't care. Eh, fine, we can make it. Also, I had said, oh, yeah, no, we did that. Um, ah, right. Um, coming okay we read into the read buffer um, if nn is wait no this, this this is not it anymore and plus equal nn which is what we just read and finally we just need to compare um, buffer up to nn uh, with source from n to n plus nn
This should work. We read into the buffer. Uh, we check that it matches that part. Then we increase this. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of scared to test that, but please be right. I want to move on to actual crypto. Please, no. Message authentication failed? Oh, I see. <sighs> yep. Okay. <clears throat> One of the really fun things about cryptography engineering is that usually when you get an error, it just says, it doesn't work, dummy. And from there, it's, 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 it's all fun. Um, uh, all right, let's instrument this a little. zero okay that's that's actually good um because it means it's the very first chunk and it looks like it's true for oh no it's true only for the one length exactly one chunk oh that's fascinating okay this is a little more than it just doesn't work dummy um So it's only the case here? Huh. Cool. But it's true for every step size. Um, cool. In that case, I want to have printed how much buffer there is. Um, Now, is that right? If we take this and remove the overhead of a poly 1305 tag, um, which is 16, that's correct. Yes. All right, I guess we're doing some printf um, debugging. What should be happening here is that a whole chunk comes in, it gets written to this buffer here, um, and then this is true, but this is false. And so the flush does not happen here, but the flush happens here. And then this is what is written with the nonce, which has the last chunk flag set. In read, 
what should be happening is that this comes in, nothing happens here, nothing happens here. Um, read chunk happens. Um, this open happens. We use the same set ch uh, last chunk flag on the nonce. We only increase afterward. Oh shit. I think I know. God damn it, stream. Even if the function fails, the content of dest up to its capacity may be overwritten. <sighs> so what's happening here is that this is disintegrating the buffer that I was so proudly reusing before I get to try this again. And I hate this thing in stream where you have to do the double trial decryption like this because you don't know if it's the last uh, chunk. If it fails, you have to try again, hoping that it was bad. This is a problem here too. Uh, no, there's a single call to seal and if an error happens, it's just the end of the world anyway. Okay, so what's happening here is that open here is overwriting the source because these alias. Uh, all right, then this has to be a... No, I hate it, it's an extra copy. Now been an hour and a half just implementing stream. Yeah, no, there is no way. If we fail decrypting, we can't be decrypting in place. Maybe time to pour myself a mate, but I wanted this to be like fine first. Um, Yeah, no, the, there is no way. A copy needs to happen. Either it has to happen before or it has to happen after um, the error happens. Not even the error happens, it can be conditional on the error because by the time the error happens, it's too late and we lost all the data. I'm glad the tests found this though. It's good. Um, We can allocate a um, buffer on the stack and do a copy in and out of that. We can, we should not assign it as unread because that would make it um, escape to the heap. Not that I'm profiling this at all this time, but I don't want one allocation every t uh, chunk. Uh, fine. It's just chunk size, right? Because opening can be at most uh, chunk size. Yeah. Uh,
or does it return if it fails? Uh, doesn't tell us. Okay. Uh, Maybe. And read will be buff uh, up to the copied output, which is what we got out of here, which is variable size because just like in is variable size. Uh, but now we're reusing the buffer, right? Come on. Yes. Woo. Cool. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting a matter. Uh, back in three minutes, kettle so fast. I think you can actually still see me. I, that's not a good setup.
move on to something fun, shall we? What should we work on? Okay. Um, we have the format parser and the format serializer, uh, which I built yesterday. Well, I tried earlier than that, but I finished yesterday. Uh, we have the stream encryption and stream decryption. There will be like bits and pieces we need for the command line tool, uh, like reading keys from files and boring stuff like that. But I feel like we can start actually implementing some, per some crypto. Um, well, the stream was crypto, up, but um, do, 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 do. Um, what do we need next? Uh, probably just a package Aggie that starts bringing together things like recipients and has various types for various recipients. This is going to be something I will, I would instinctively bike shed a bunch. So, um, let's say, hmm. We can probably start making key exchanges. Um, let's go back to the... Uh, oh yeah, I mean, if people from the stream want to suggest what to do uh, next, I kind of need not to be shuffling bytes just for like the next half hour or so. Uh, but if you want to call out parts of the spec that you want to implement first, uh, let me know on the on the chat. Um, yeah, we need something that will take something like this um, along with the secret key and generate the file key. Or the other way around, something that will uh, end for sending something that will take a file key and wrap it uh, for a recipient uh, which has a public key. I'm sure I will hate the first API I make for this, so I'll just make it private and hope nobody judges me here and then redo it a couple of times before I publish it as a library. I promised the prototype, but you know, just a common live prototype. All right, two functions. Uh, one generates a recipient line, which I think we can reuse from the format package. Um, it has type, it has uh, arguments, and it has a body. Um, are the args, the args are just as is, so we'll have to decode the base64 from it, but okay. And then in one direction, yes, it takes, um, it will generate the ephemeral secret by itself. Um, it, it needs to take a public key to, to encrypt two and a file key to, to encrypt because this is a lower level primitive. Um, for anybody that hasn't checked out how Aga works, it's pretty simple. Um, there's a file key, which is the actual key that actually uh, encrypts 
um, you know, the file. Um, and then there is, and that file key is encapsulated, uh, wrapped with the public key encryption for the recipient so that it can be sent. Um, this is pretty standard uh, double wrapping. You use a symmetric key with stream that we just implemented for the payload and you use um, something like uh, X5519 or whatever to, to send it over. So one function takes a public key and a, f and a secret essentially and the file key and it generates a recipient line and another function takes a recipient line and a secret key and it returns um, um, a file key. That should be enough, should be it. Okay, here goes nothing. Uh, I should be putting in uh, license uh, headers, but anyway. For anybody f uh, following along, it got asked on the stream. The license is just the, the Go license because I, I work on Go. I, I like being able to just not have to worry too much about moving code uh, from one project to the other or where did my brain develop the code in. Uh... Um. From the chat, uh, a question about why a script over Argon too, and I had uh, started with Argon, um, but realistically, there's actually more implementations of a script out there than there are of Argon. Um, so it was an attempt to be boring. Uh, I didn't want Aga to be, you know, the latest stuff. I consider using uh, ASGCM Civ, for example, and I was like. Nobody has that. Uh, and the script is mostly fine, uh, like very close to, to being just fine. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I didn't, couldn't come up with a strong argument for Argon and just wanted to pick the most boring things possible. So actually the point is to allow third party implementations. Um, We're making an interface. One should never start by defining interfaces in internal packages, but I'm almost sure that this one will have to be an interface. Um, oh, naming things, naming things is hard. Um, seal, no. Um, wrap, maybe. I like wrap. So wrap needs to take Oh, all right, name wrap, which takes a public key in whatever, uh, in what format actually? Uh, we will definitely change our mind here over time, but. Yeah, what's a public key for... Wait, what's a public key for S-Script? This does not make sense, does it? I can think about it another time. Yep. I, I promised it would be out by Monday. Um, we're moving on. And a line, which is... Uh, well... Not, not really a line, a uh, block, which is a format dot recipient, and it returns a file key or an error. 
and then there's unwrap wait nah wrong way around Did I just define unwrap and called it wrap? Yes, I did. Unwrap now takes a secret key, uh, which in case of S script would be just the password, so secret, uh, and the block, and it unwraps it. Okay, this is good. Um, and wrap instead takes <laughs> let's call it public for now but in a script it would take uh, a password too so what's the name for both the recipient password and the recipient public key just recipient all right just recipient i hate that there's a recipient interface that takes a recipient but This is why none of this is public. I also hate that there's two byte slices. Ugh. We'll need a type for this and this, almost for sure. But I can't think of what that type is just yet. Um, and it returns a format dot recipient and an error. Maybe. I also hate that the actual type that implements this um, is going to be uh, empty struct because it's not stateful but eh, again we're not here to over engineer this for now mm -mm -mm. The name is useful because it's what the parser will use to match in a map uh, the decoder to whatever it's finding um, here. Let's start with wrap. Oh, useful. Uh, I need to redo this whole package. I have a proposal about a much better uh, function for this, and we should probably also have a, a point length thing in here. Yeah, no, this is a terrible package. This is not usable at all. Like, I know that things can just be random bytes, but most people would not. Well, somebody should tell the maintainer. <coughs> oh, this should be a point.
uh, from the chat asking, um, aren't we supposed to run the output of x to a hash function? We do. Um, check this out. Um, this gets run through HKDF. Uh, part of it is because that also ties it to um, the public key itself. Uh, oh yeah, the package docs should tell you, but that's actually complicated um, because of uh, low order points and forcing to the zero output, uh, which is something the package should just error out for, and it can't because it doesn't have an error in here. Anyway, there's a proposal uh, I opened to turn all of that into x25519 function that actually returns an error. Um, from the chat, the suggestion that maybe the key um, should be in the struct. Um, I see it, but then we would need two different interfaces for uh, a recipient that wraps and the recipient that unwraps so that then you have two different implementations and they have, that's probably the right way to do it, honestly. Um, that's probably the right way to do it. Uh, yeah, they don't need to be the same thing. You never use them at the same time. Uh, Yeah, fine. Um, that's a good idea. It just needs good names. Uh, one is a recipient. And the other, well, one is a recipient you can send to, and one is a recipient that you are. Uh, identity, recipient and identity. Um, receiver, except suggestions for the names. Essentially, let's tell you identity. Um, recipient only has wrap and identity only has unwrap and they store the, um, the secret in, inside of them and then we have an x559 recipient uh, with um, public key inside it We could probably have new methods, and by the time I make this public, we will, but eh, not for now. Um, yep, yep, I'm fine with this. Okay, um, <clears throat> then let's work this out. Um, we need to first, we are creating one of these lines. 
So we need to generate an ephemeral secret. This will probably have to be mockable at some point, but um, We'll worry about it when we're testing it. Uh, then we need to do the actual X5519 to get the shared secret. I hate this this API with their with its thirty two byte arrays. Okay, let's do this in the right order. Essentially, we will have um, where is this? Yeah. We'll have an ephemeral um, secret. Um, we will pass it to scatter base malt. Oh, I see. Horrible, horrible API. Also because soon enough we'll have to do a copy. Now we have to do a copy. Um, And if we hadn't checked the length here, uh, it could we could totally just not notice that we're copying something short, for example. Um, So we do a scatter multiplication and we get out the shared secret from in, which is our ephemeral secret. Uh, and the base point, which is their public key. So this is, you know, Diffie-Hellman. Uh, there's our our private key, our public key, and combining our 
private key with their public key will result in the same as combining their um, private key that they have, you know, in their secret uh, identity key with our public key, which we're going to send in the recipient line. Okay, so this is the crypto bit. Now we need to do a bit of encoding and then a little HKDF to do the encryption. Uh, encode is defined as canonical base64 URL without padding wrapped uh, at doesn't matter. It, I remembered why, why I wrapped it at 57 because this way a uh, SSH key with 2048 uh, bits will wrap perfectly. I, yes, it's LCD, okay? <laughs> um, here uh, we have the all the stuff let's go in format and just expose encode string and the code string um, All right, we can start forming the uh, the recipient line. Oh, this should be type, not name. All right, the idea here is that um, arguments, arguments on the line are things that the other party will need somehow to unwrap uh, the um, unwrap the key. And this stuff is what actually needs to be unwrapped. Um, like the body is actually the encryption of the file key. Well, this is uh, whatever additional data it needs. For a script, it's you know the salt and the number of um, iterations. For X519, um, um, it's going to be our public key so that they can mix it with uh, their private key, our ephemeral public key. Um, okay, encode, um, this would be just encode of that, so that should be pretty easy. Um, Yep. 
Okay. Um, so this is done with with that. Um, now we need we have this. We need to do the HKDF. Um, which as salt uses our um, our public key and the other person public key, uh, which is a way to do binding in such a uh, so that it's not actually a problem if we hit um, if we hit um, Uh, low order points. Essentially, if the other party sends us a public key which is, has a low order component, what X25519 uh, does through the clamping and the magic and the undocumented shit is that it will basically just return zero. Um, and the zero will um, have, sometimes allow you in protocols to force something into matching another um, like losing the binding to the public keys because you know zero is just zero so it could have been any public key and hashing it together with the two public keys um, helps with that uh, and the label because we are trying to like run a tight ship now Mm, HKDF, we've got a package for it, and I think we can just straight up use that package. We'll probably have to extract some of this stuff into a function, but let's do that afterwards. HKDF. New, you pass a hash function, a secret assault, and a info which is the context I assume the label yeah yeah um, our spec defines this to be shadow 56 The secret is just straight up the shared secret. The salt is what we just talked about, so it's um, First, our public key, which is what we just encoded. Followed by their public key. And then the label is just this, so. All of this will need to be moved around, like the labels should probably all be neatly named and kept together, but uh, another time. And we get a reader out of this. So now we have an H, which is, um, will generate the key for the encryption
Nope. Uh, Uh, I'm being both um, praised and heckled for uh, writing a um, design doc before um, implementing it. And I agree both that it's an excellent idea and a good thing, and that it probably only happened because I didn't really want to write the code yet. You might have noticed how I had to like force myself into writing this code by getting everybody to donate to my favorite charity. Which, by the way, thank you for that. Project Alloy is amazing. I started by going to conferences. This wouldn't be happening if conferences weren't there or if I couldn't afford them. And Project Alloy sends people to conferences. It works. Um, read full. Um, from the H into the wrapping key. Uh, I don't think HKDF ever errors out unless it's too, you extracted too much, which is definitely not 32 bytes, but I don't know, check your uh, errors, folks. Um, ret run. Root, okay. All right, now we, that we have the wrapping key, what do we do with it? Um, we encrypt the file key and encode it. We're almost there. Um, encrypt in this case is chacha20.1305 with a zero nonce. I know this is terrifying, but I think everywhere the key is always fresh and always only used once. So I think this is fine, but if anybody wants to stare at this doc, which is at um, age-tool.com, um, yeah, um, maybe check, double check my assumptions here. Um, for example, here I think that ephemeral is always random and ephemeral makes its way into our public key and our public key makes its way both into um, into salt and salt make its way into the HKDF as well as the shared secret um, depending on um, the ephemeral itself. So I think um, it's definitely, yes. Uh, I could uh, just use HKDF to also generate the nonce, but that makes, that's actually useless. Like if you use HKDF to generate both the key and the nonce, which is kind of what TLS does, and maybe it's what I should be doing. If TLS does it, you know. But I can see how that's different. If you hit, uh, like if you, if you repeat your inputs into HKDF, you're not, you're going to lose anyway because the mm, key and nonce pair will be the same. And if you don't, you're fine because uh, obviously the key is 128 bits. It's not going to be uh, just a collision. So I think there is a good argument for keeping the zero nonce and I would like not to touch the spec this weekend as much as possible. But if anybody can think of a reason, I'll donate. Like if you can break this, I'll donate, I don't know, let's say $200 to a charity of your choice. Um, call it a bug bounty, but I don't want to actually pay people because that's complicated, so pick a charity. Um, now, uh, yes, um, where should the encryption thingy go? Format? Kind of becoming a. No, it's not format. It's not format. 
um, crypto. It crypto is so I hate when a crypto project has a crypto.go file. Um, it's like utils as a package. Um, primitives. I know this allocates, uh, don't at me, uh, I don't care. You know, you can use that, the inliner to make APIs like this that still don't allocate. And you can change them afterwards if you need to optimize them. That's really one of my favorite tricks. Uh, if you search um, efficient APIs with the inliner, you'll find the blog post about it. And I love it because it allows you to write the interface like you want it. And then if you need to optimize it, go back and remove the location from it. it I'm such a fan. Instead, I hate having two arguments with the same type, but uh, private things. Um, from the chat asking the byte slice in the return does the allocation. Well, I mean, the problem is that now I, I will have to allocate the return value in here somewhere, and then I'll have to return it. And a function that allocates something and then returns it has to allocate it on the heap because it has no control over its uh, lifespan anymore. Um, but if you write a thin enough wrapper, it can be inlined and become a stack allocation in the parent uh, instead. There, there's a whole um, blog post. Um, So this is the location here. Uh, wait, why, why am I doing this? The point of append API is that you don't have to do this. Um, instead, seal is the opposite. It's an append API, which is a nice compromise. I discussed them all in the blog post, so I'm not going to bore you, but um, basically if you pass neo, appending to neo generates a new slice, right? So that's where that location will happen. Uh, the nonce is zero, so we can just... Uh... Well, that didn't work. Uh, we could do size, but that would make it variable size and probably cause an allocation, so if this had yes cool better package much better package than curve of fr19 oh that's a bad package i need to use my own shit more often uh 
Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Cool, yep. Maybe we should also combine this into a HKDF uh, primitive. Uh, nah, another time. Mostly because I find a file with just two functions kind of unpleasant, but nope, moving on. Now, uh, wrapped key is going to be constant everything is actually 32 but you know there are 32s that come from different places um, And this is true of both public keys, private keys, shared keys. So it's all 32. It's 32 all the way down. Which is part of why that API is kind of horrible. I don't actually know if I like it better with the constant, honestly. Nah, fuck it. Um, encrypt. Uh, what's the order? Key plain text. So wrapping key, file key. And now that we have the wrapped key, that's just what we encode as the body and we're done. pass through string, which is not nice, but uh, uh, what should we have? Just an encode, uh, we can uh, uh, why not? Horrible API.
<laughs> Somebody po uh, pointing out on the chat that um, I've been complaining about APIs relating to byte slices a lot. And yeah, uh, but I think it's not byte slice per se the problem. The problem is that it exposes the core issue of API design of who makes the allocation, um, uh, who, uh, um, yeah, who makes the allocation, who owns the slice, is the slice um, uh, a variable or constant? It's, uh, yeah, it, I think it just doesn't solve some problems for you. I don't think it's necessarily br uh, broken. It's just the lowest level. It's basically a pointer and a length, right? So it exposes the usual problems of API design. Um, well, with strings, for example, you can kind of just bypass it. And it's untyped, so in places where a type would be better. Um, yeah. And then there's George trolling, and now I need to find a way to ban people from the chat. Uh, because he just uh, suggested proposal, add ownership and borrows to go. How do I ban somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> it's good to have moderators. I think he's now muted for five minutes. <laughs> to be clear, he, he's a friend. Uh, we're not just going around um, banning people for liking Rust. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, Uh, is there a way to encode with uh, line breaks with base64 in uh, mm, from the package? How about we solve this problem another time because I don't have a good solution and I don't want to get stuck. Um, by the way, something funny happened on chat. Uh, there is a thing uh, that basically every Go crypto implementation at some point builds, which is called slice for append, which basically is just something that takes a slice um, and um, makes it longer with the same logic that append does and then returns both the whole new thing and just the tail. We probably could have used that in the writer. We should have used that in the writer. Of course, the solution is always slice for append. And the, um, um, and the automod just decided that it was um, a bad word, slice for append. I just had to whitelist it. Lol. Um, Anyway, we need we need t-shirts with slice for a pen on it that exactly 15 people in the world will get. Um, but anyway. Um, yep, encode to string and we will do the round trip. Don't care. Um, wrapped key, wrapped key. Um, I'm getting a question about slice for a pen, so let's just show you. Um,
Slice her appendix everywhere. It's everywhere. So yeah, it extends it, does its append, uh, except it also returns the tail separately. And then you can, you know, do uh, this. Uh, and then you have the explicit nonce here that you can use with copy. So basically you have the tail that you can use for um, filling up when you don't uh, have something to append specifically. Um, when you don't want to use append directly. Um, It would probably have made the um, logic better um, uh, in the other place. Yeah, here. Here is a good example because you could not use um, append. Because for append, you would have to first make a temporary um, uh, slice uh, and then call append. This instead, re this is the same thing you would get back from append. But this is just the tail, which then you can use to populate, to pass, for example, to Xcore or Keystream. There's a hundred other examples in the standard library. Okay, I think we're done. Um, we return L, nil, and ta-da! I think that's it. Uh, I think we want a new line here. Actually, let me check the, the parser. Um, parse, uh, why is the code string undeclared? What? Oh, yeah, that was silly. Um, lines from the body line is read bytes returning a slice containing the data up to and including the delimiter so lines have to have their own um, new lines at the end let's check that marshall does the same yeah marshall just writes the body it should probably return an error if there isn't um a new line uh, yeah, it should. Um, I don't want. I don't want to do it now. So, uh, parse will definitely fail. Um, Marshall should check. said that the recording will not have the the chat um streaming through it uh, you had meant to figure out how to do that i'm sure it's doable just um the conversation in the chat is pretty fun okay um All right, next we write the identity, I think. Uh, we have the recipient, we, we do the identity. Yep, um, be right back. Uh, I'll go to a restroom, pour another matte. Back in a sec. Also need food at some point, but eh.
Oh, yeah, um, in the chat, uh, people are talking about parallel implementations, and I definitely want parallel implementations to happen. Um, and in fact, not this weekend, but um, I'll make as many test vectors and uh, example and test suites that orders can use as possible. Anyway, next, um, next identity. Um, this should be easy. <laughs> I said that. Oh, and uh, we have um, Matthew Green that might uh, set up um, a RFC, so that'll be fun. Hmm. Resuming. Boilerplate. I like how quickly um, Go, uh, Goffles, um, the ID integration um, racks. I pasted that and was immediately like, nope, you already have this. Um, Also, we should do the trick to check that um, this is a recipient. This is being an extremely pleasant experience using Goffles, uh, by the way, uh, which works with modules and everything else. I usually work on the standard library where it has more uh, rough edges and I hadn't noticed yet how good it got in uh, outside modules, in, well, normal modules. This is going to say that it's missing the unwrap method, perfect. going to be a little boring. Oh, um, we got to the question about uh, ligatures. Uh, this is actually just uh, 
um, ligature of the font. The font is called Pyra Code, and it's amazing. So this is going to be their public key. Well, uh, uh, we'll have to copy it annoyingly. want to use the cool new percent w that only works in go 113 probably not do i yeah let's not do go 113 only stuff for now um Finally, wrap key. What's wrapped key supposed to be? Eh, let's not check it now. Uh, let's see. got the public key we've got the wrapped key it's now time to do the crypto um, we start by um, let's do this uh, we copy the public key into their public key uh, and instead of ephemeral, we have our secret key, which at this point I might as well have of the right format. All right, with this, we have the shared secret. We didn't have to generate nothing ephemeral because, yeah, because everything is already there, that makes sense. 
probably check that it's not at zero output, but uh, um, if only the library maintainers had made it easier, I would do it, but yeah, you know. Our public key. Do we even have our public key? Also, hold on. No, 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 no. This is the other way around. The first one is, in this case, their public key. And the second one. Because the first one is the sender public key, the one we just decoded. So their public key, right? Because their public key comes from public key, which is what we decoded, yes. So first, the one we decoded, they have to be in the same order. Uh, followed by... Yeah, as an optimization, I might have this ha carry its own public key. We'll have a new method anyway. Um, Okay, uh, what did we do here with this public key? Did we copy it? Yeah. Thanks, I hate it. Um, look, if we're gonna have new methods, might as well have these be 32 byte slices. Um, so we can also skip this. And we can have this actually be a thing like this and All right, the order is going to be first their public key and then our public key. No, nope. yes. That should have worked. Okay, this generates the wrapping key. 
can probably be dried up, but probably not worth it. Um, and then we can do uh, the crypt with wrapping key. For usability here, we'll need to return much more useful uh, error messages, but another time. Yeah, this might do it. Border plate, border plate, um, and finally curved fine line, <coughs> scalar base mold with into our public key from the secret key. This is my work. Hmm. Time to test it.
now being heckled for not using syntax highlighting. Yeah, I think we just do another uh, round trip test and call it a day. I can think of a million more tests than one needs, uh, but. the public key. This would prob should probably just take a age format public key and secret key, but we can make the new functions better later. By the way, I really like the fact that we have the stateful structures separate for recipient and identity. Thanks for um, uh, forcing me to do that from the chat. This is good. because I don't think this is actually ever going to be wrong. for the chat, uh, you can ignore that. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay, and now to the actual thing. Um, we do wrap on the file key.
and then we do a wrap on the block Oh, um, very good question from the chat. Um, so, Aga is post quantum. When is Aga post quantum safe? Uh, it's post quantum safe when used with a strong password, but not while used with public keys. I think that's correct. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, when you're using it with passwords, it's uh, 256 bit keys everywhere and a script, and none of those really break uh, with quantum computers. And if you use it with X five five one nine, of course, X five five one nine is yeah. All right, time to test it. Neat. Nice. It works. I want something to eat. Uh, tut, 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 tut. Uh, what can I eat? Uh, I don't want to make you all wait while I cook pasta. Uh, or we turn this into a stream uh, for a cooking stream and I show you how I cook pasta. Um, but more realistically. Um, also because the next step is um, is actually um, fun. The next step, we just take all these pieces together and I think we smash together the first um, Agge file. Um, I don't think we have a lot left. Maybe the HMAC authentication of the header? Huh, whose responsibility is that? Eh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, seamless, as George is saying, seamless is happening. Um, now I'm going to switch to the webcam only, if I know how to do that. Yes. Um, change the banner. seamless for a moment where is my usual order button come on seamless you have one job Done.
Inception. Cool. Okay. Doopy 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 doop. Now, what do we need to put together a file? We already have the um, formatter. Um, um, and now the chat went completely off topic planning uh, climbing outing. Ah. <laughs> and now I'm checking when it closes. I mean, you realize I'm not a professional streamer, right? Okay, putting pieces together. Um, we have the stuff that generates and parses this. We... Do we have this? What do we have for formatting anyway? Um, deep, 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 deep. Type args body and the header has the, both the AAD and the Mac. Good, good, good. And Marshall will marshal the whole thing. But how is the Mac? How do we generate the Mac if we don't know? We have to marshal it twice. First without the Mac and then with the Mac. Yeah. Okay, so we have the thing that encodes this whole thing. We have the thing that generates the line for this. And then we have the writer to write the rest of the payload. I think we can write directly the thing that just takes a file and a recipient and a slice of recipients and just encrypts the file. Agri dot encrypt, uh, which means we need to rename those primitives for something else than encrypt. Um, I mean, we don't have to, but you. Okay, you filed. We're getting closer and closer to the real thing. Feels better and better not to be further and further from the uh, stream. Uh, 
Um, mm -hmm. Is it encrypt? I guess it's encrypt and decrypt, right? Eh, names, another time. Um, source, are you a reader? No, wait. Encrypt will return a right closer, right? Yeah, and it has a destination. Yeah. And then it has I think so. We start by generating the file key. Oh, it's so satisfying when everything starts coming together. Um, anyway um, Yes, I love it. When you build the pieces right and they start snapping together. Does recipient actually need the type? I guess it returns it from a, from wrap. I don't think it need it does, but eh, we can keep it for now. Um, all right.
nice. Now we, we need to solve the part where we need to generate the HMAC of the header uh, without without the rest. Um, uh, This is the HMAC of the header. Up to the AAD value included. So we want it up to here. Yeah, also then we'll want, probably want APIs to add recipients without um, without re-encrypting, which probably means we'll want a message type, not just uh, dump, encrypt, and decrypt, but I said prototype. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 do. All right, let's split this properly. Format should just return um, something that is just maybe the hash. No, 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 uh, we can do just um, Marshall for signing, I think, which does everything up to here. And then Marshall just calls uh, Marshall for signing. Uh, Let's try this. Yep, yep, yep. could save the save it but this is not going to be too slow right i don't know not not worrying about it now You should do it. Yep. Um, so computing the header Mac re requires the file key and the header, that's it. I am extremely glad I wrote the design doc first. Oh, it does the encoding uh, already. That's useful. Um, all right, let's go rip some HKDF code. There is nothing in them. Uh, um, I'm being asked if the spaces here are correct. They're not, thank you very much. Um, there needs a space here. Ooh, food is here. We are back.
knew I wouldn't want to stop um, as soon as the food came, so I also got the damame to start snacking instead. Damame. Um, where were we still in the HKDF code? Thomas Thatcher just showed up on, on the chat um, uh, wishing me that your scream will be your only friend a citation from an ad um, and I think it's because he's upset that the header is textual and I don't know I spent too much time around Go to really want to write around another binary protocol and I do TLS already too much that I can probably, like, there's a 20% chance I can be convinced to turn it into a binary protocol. And realistically, when we try to make this uh, into an RFC, I will be dri driven into the ground by the ITF. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not switching right now, don't worry. Um, I also got asked, um, whether you can sign with the key, with the keys generated by Agile or not. And yes, um, you can reuse keys. I wrote a blog post about using at 25519 keys for encryption and vice versa. We can probably add support for signified keys, I guess at some point, like if we wanted to Agile. Um, it's a little harder to do the other way around because at 255 there are, um, for a, X25519 key, there are two at 25519 keys. So it's easier if you have a at 25519 key because then there's a one uh, to two mapping. But anyway, um, All right, header Mac, some HKDF ribbed stuff. Um, by the way, I really want to thank everybody that um, donated to Project Alloy. It's really a, a project that I care about. And you made this happen. Who knows when I would have had to wrote, uh, written this code otherwise. And I like streaming. The company is nice. You folks catch my errors. It's useful. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, HKDF with uh, empty salt and header as the label. I'm worried that I will get one of these wrong and then other implementations will have to choose whether to be incompatible with, uh, with mine until I fix it or yeah. Anyway. Um, the secret is straight up the file key, which is fine because we're using HKDF labeling for domain separation. I'm very happy about this pack. 
Not wrong. Uh, ah, right. Can this really be ever an error? Uh, It doesn't make any promise, does it? Yeah, just entropy uh, limit reached. I am so tempted to make this just panic because it's not possible. Um, I'm not claiming this is a good idea. Um, I am a cryptographer. I am not your cryptographer. Um, HKDF extract 32 bytes, use it as a HMAC key, which is HMAC SHA-256. Um, it's good that this, these functions take the new function itself because it causes the hash to be linked. The whole crypto.hash numbered thing was a mistake. Where you might specify a hash without actually linking it, and then it has to be like, yeah, but this is not actually available, it's not registered. Which is just another way to say global state is bad. Don't have global state. And don't have init time uh, side channels. Wait a moment. Munch, munch. linked I mean compiled in um, you know crypto dot hash has this horrible thing where you know it might be available or not and the hashes need to register themselves and they do that by init when you import them it's bad instead here you just link it for sure because you're referencing the package N none of that magic anyway um, the key, right? It's the HMAC key. There we go. And then we do header dot Marshall without Mac straight into HH. I love this. Pieces just snap together. It's good. Um, exact same handling because this can't possibly return an error. Right? All right, at this point, fuck it, fine. Uh, the marshalling can actually return an error, so that actually would be a real error. Um, and finally, we um, I 
get the sun. And that should be the header rich man. So header dot Mac header Mac file key header. Boom. This doesn't work. Good. Because of course there's an error now. I need more food. My head starts to suspend. <laughs> How do you need, do you know you need food? Head is spinning. Uh, This will probably need um, a pass for all the um, error messages to be actually something actionable because yeah, it failed to compute the header Mac, but probably what happened instead is that um, marshalling failed and we should have a useful error for that instead. So. Uh. We're almost done. Um, Oh, we have to be careful not to use the file key directly. Um, I guess something that we can have in primitives can be a file key to stream key. Uh, probably also the header stuff should go into primitives, but mm. naturally, yeah, sure, why not? Oh, it's lovely when you move something and pop, uh, all the um, uh, imports move move with them. It means you move the, the things right because I feel like files should kind of be grouped by what they import. Uh, so that was good. Uh, we make a new nonce. I should really stop and eat. I want to finish this function though. Which we said is 16 bytes. Sure, that's enough. Um, Mm. 
parameter takes key and destination. So should should we be hashing the header hmac into this no because then we can't do the uh uh ring uh, ring encryption well i'm adding a recipient without re encrypting everything okay Hmm, nice things just snap together such that we can do this Now we need to actually write the header of course And we need to write the nonce. Interesting. sure what is happening here this might actually be a, a gopples issue um, wait this can't be a writer it has to be a right closer because the um, they have to yeah they have to close it and probably this should not be an interface at all but this is like literally the simplest API that will work um, I think the real API needs to actually have like a struct to act on and stuff like that. Uh, I remember thinking, no. Oh, mm. oh yeah, yeah, before I forget, um, stream.close should attempt to close the inner mm. Uh, again, there's a question about variadic, ar variadic arcs versus a slice. Good question. Maybe a slice here. Uh, it's very easy to turn a slice into a variadic, and I kind of like the semantic of call this function with your destination and your recipients. Um, 
But yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't have a strong opinion. Um, I love the fact that this just works. Like we just return new writer um, so that then it bubbles up and you just write directly to the stream after we wrote the, the header. I am very satisfied with how these things snapped together. Yep. All right, let's implement stream key and then I'll eat. Thanks. Why exactly does this think that stream key is not a thing? Weird. All right, the stream key has nonsense the salt payload here. File key here. Should I trade this be? No, this is wrong. Um, how is that defined? Uh, just 32. I mean, I know they're the same, but it's not that. Well, this one is right. Uh, yep. Yeah, this is a stream key, so it has to be. Um, and this can't possibly. So. the imports are just right but we need to kill the gopples yep 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 yeah there we go all right uh hell who wants to see the a file uh i think this works well, it's not immediate how to use that, but I think it works. But no, I, I, I need food. I actually need food. And then we test it.
this is a very good time to ask questions because I'm going to be eating for uh, for a little bit. I assume you're not particularly interested in just watching me, but I can answer a question. Um, what future, future do you hope for Agate? Uh, well, on one hand, I would just like it to be uh, a kind of useful tool uh, in itself. Um, ideally, some alternative implementations. And simply replacing the very simple, very easy case of I want to encrypt a file and keep it somewhere uh, or encrypt it and send it over email or encrypt it and send it over something or store it as a backup. You know, all the things that we use GPG for, which I'm never comfortable with because I never know, for example, how presence of keys in the public hearing interacts with everything. And I add keys to the public hearing to all, do all sorts of things. And can those somehow like col collide with my keys? And uh, I hate it. And also the format is bad. No. The PGP format is actually bad. Mm. So ideally replacing uh, PGP for that. If I get um, uh, trolled on Twitter all the time for, but this doesn't do email, so it can't replace GPG. I get it. The point is that modern um, cryptography tools shouldn't do 15 things. Modern cryptography tools should do one thing and do it well. And Aga is meant to do file encryption. Um, for messaging, you can have something else. For encrypting emails, just don't. Emails are a bad thing to encrypt because they have to be available forever. And most people want to index them anyway. Now, there's some misalignment of thread models there. Which is why I think none of the email encryption solutions are nice to use. And... For signing Signify, um, you know, uh, George Tankersley wrote a blog post about modern alternatives, and uh, Thomas wrote uh, one, two for the Latacora blog, uh, blog. Check those out, and you'll see where I want Agri to sit. It's meant to sit in the pantheon of various tools that replace altogether GPG which with modern focused Unixy do one thing and do it well tools. And also if it becomes a, a, a standardized format, Agib would be nice so that we have a format for just key wrapping, which is not the horribleness of the PGP packets. That's part of why I don't want to do it in binary because I, <laughs> I don't want it. I don't even want to go near that. <clears throat> Should a text header format um, uh, anticipate arbitrary multi spaces in separators? No, specifically no. Uh, it's textual, but it's not meant to be forgiving. Actually, the only test I have in the format package is a test that 
buzzes uh, the parser and then marshals and checks that the marshal output is identical to the um, to the original. So if you have anything <clears throat> that makes it such that it does not round trip, for example, two spaces are fine as a separator, but then when you marshal use one space, no, don't do that. I will provide a whole folder of invalid files as well as a folder of valid files so that uh, implementations can test against that. Um, how did I come up with the choices for Agus crypto primitives? They're the most boring things that would do the job. Um, I <clears throat> more boring than Chacha 251305 would have been ASGCM, uh, but um, <clears throat> G uh, ASGCM uh, is basically impossible to do. Um, securely without uh, hardware support so let's not do that um, if I have to pick one then it's Chacha um, hence Chacha mm. x25519 is straightforward and while it's actually kind of a bad design for anything that is not Diffie Hellman it's good for Diffie Hellman uh, oh and then there's the SSH crap which is absolutely just crap added on top because I think we need some sort of network effect and I think we can steal the network of github keys so you can just do age uh, github colon philosophy and it will go find my at 5519 uh, uh, ssh key and turn it into a x5519 key and use it for encryption which is a crime to be clear but I'm almost sure I've done it right which is exactly what you want to hear from a cryptographer, right? Then um, I picked one hash and decided to use that hash everywhere. I took HKDF um, for everything from DNS because HKDF is great. HMAC because it's the one through Mac. Um, and yeah. Everything was just the boring, boring choice. HMAC is the one through Mac because the other Macs are not actually hashes and we've used HMAC for so long that we forget that. And then when we're told, wait, the output of my Mac is not, um, I don't know, mm, uniformly random or it's <clears throat> not guaranteed to be one way or whatever. And, you know, cryptography are like, yeah, duh, the Mac only gives you the promise that it can't be generated by someone without the key. But then you're like, yes, but my protocol hurts now. And so, yeah, no, just use HMAC. Mm. Mm. How do you plan to fail during the streaming decryption of large files? <sighs> This is a hard question. Um, Unix does not really give you a real way out here. We'll neither, either need a flag to opt in or out of buffering, but you know, I can't just buffer a giant file. Um, and exiting one from a pipe doesn't even make the whole common, the whole common line um, fail. Uh, you have to do s um, set dash o pipe fail to get that extremely reasonable behavior. So, yeah, that's not gonna be great. Uh, but I don't know how any tool can do this. Like the options are buffer everything, or 
allow truncation basically. You can still exit one, but and we will of course exit one, but mm. asking uh, only support chunked. I don't want to um, make our downstreams use have to implement chunking. Like we implement chunking so that we know we can stream and seek and then know still when truncation happens. But I mean, once you want to Unix pipe this, there is there is no solution. Yeah, we can just call um, shutdown dash h now when uh, truncation happens. That's the plan. I'm feeling better. It occurs to me that there's probably some Twitch etiquette around eating or not eating while streaming, but mm, I'm not a professional streamer. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, question about what I'm eating. Um, these are this is Chinese comfort food: uh, fried rice, uh, chicken fried rice, and pork fried dumplings. <clears throat> Would I eventually like to see Age show up in mail client extensions and similar? Not as a way to encrypt the emails. As a way to encrypt uh, attachments with a good UX? Yeah, why not? Yeah, um, it would be cool to have the ability to encrypt with Age directly in your attachments automatically, but not, not, not for the messages. That, that's just, that's a UX and thread modeling problem. The chat has opinions. <laughs> Thomas points out that attachments are evil and the chat pro proceeds to rule all of email evil. I agree, I'm down for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Slack plugin, sure. Um, Slack plugin, I, I will definitely um, password store plugin so I can read the last bit of GPG from my life. Although for that, I'll need to actually figure out the um, PIV um, support for YubiKeys and I'm not looking forward to that. I expect it will be just as much effort as writing the, all of the rest of Age. Hmm. This was enough food. Let's not eat so much. I need a nap. I'll leave this for a snack.
food was had. And I'll pour another cup of mate and we are there. Ha, yes, you, you folks ho uh, heard the, um, the, the ship horn. Uh, I have, like, uh, how do I not disclose? Well, too late, I guess. Near my location, there are um, um, uh, cruise ships, and I can hear the, the, the horn very well, even if they're not very close, really. Um, so yeah, during the weekend, they do it all the time. Uh, and there's a... Di there he goes. Um, <clears throat> and um, there's the Disney one that does the, the little tune with the horn at full volume, and I love it. It does the like, do 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 do. It, it's something. Has, hasn't done it recently. That would be sad if I made them stop. <clears throat> Man, OPSEC is hard. Keeping your location. <laughs> I mean, not that this gave you more than, I don't know, 15 blocks radius, so. Yeah. Cool, food was had. Mate is brewing. Um, Let's generate a file, shall we? <laughs> Wait. Fun fact from the from the chat. Uh, also, hi, David. Um, cruise ship horns can cause faults in RSA. Um, huh. Well, uh, anything can cause faults in RSA, so I'm not strictly shocked. Um, <sighs> do, 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 do. Um. Yeah, the right API is probably going to be something like generate file that returns a false struct. Oh, it's leaving. 
Bar. <clears throat> There should probably be some helper functions somewhere here. Oh, also the, somebody from the chat, uh, I think had mentioned, um, yeah, I think it was Matt Layer. Um, that was probably not the right pronunciation, sorry. Um, <clears throat> thing to make the sizes into constants, we probably should do that. A uh, question from the Slack if there's a plan for auditing AGE. And the answer there, I'm afraid, is well, you can try to convince Thomas, who is watching us right now, hi Thomas, uh, to audit it, or you can donate much more money uh, and we'll pay someone. But otherwise, It's not like any, anybody really audits GPG either, though. <laughs> I'm sure somebody somebody did audit GPG, but they find new new stuff all the time. Um, BD, BD, BD. Um, what is this key? Um, <clears throat> a header, the header mark, H mark key. Just H mark key size. This might not be a. Uh, uh, worth it. <laughs> Thomas says we don't want him to audit it because he's uh, he's the author of a competing format, and his format doesn't even mac the header. So why would I trust him? And no, 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 that's the point. You are a competing format. You want to show that my implementation is bad so that um, so that people will use yours, right? Actually, I'm not finding things to replace with constants here. So, um, question when I plan to re release Age, and uh, I plan to just uh, release it uh, by dawn on Monday. That's, that's what I promised. Um, Like this should probably be replaced in a number of places, but eh. <clears throat> okay, let's test it out. Um, Yeah, we're going to need some helpers someday, but I don't know. Wait, that's wrong.
Do I want to? Uh, oh no. <clears throat> this is just the first match search just to check that everything works. Okay, our question is why um, this, uh, and it's because um, it's an array, so it needs to generate a slice for that array. Arrays are bad. Uh, I have decided that no new APIs in crypto APIs in the standard library will have arrays uh, because they seem to be a better um, type safety measure, except they're not because you never have an array already. So you're always copying from a slice to an array so all they do is hide a uh, length mismatch, uh, making it completely undetectable instead of at least detectable at runtime when you return an error because the length was wrong. I'm such a fan of right string and I get told off for using it in code review for the standard library, but here I get to use it. I don't know what's wrong with right string. I like it. Uh, I've been told that when you can just do you know this that's the right syntax for it and there's no need to import a new uh, package for it um but i like right thing um da, da, da. so this is going to be regrettable um neat Yeah, if you squint, you can see it here. This is longer than I expected it to be. Is it? I had the sizes right in my fake shit here. That's weird. Also, to close on that array, array versus slice uh, thing, I've seen in the wild a few times uh, doing things like copying 16 bytes into a 32 byte array because you had 16 bytes of key uh, and you do the copy um, and um, you have to do the copy to call uh, scalar base malt, for example, and they just don't notice and yeah, I, I think I found it in a project in the wild and that was the day I said, yeah, no, we're not doing that again. Uh, that's more length than I expected it to be. Um, why? 65? 64. So 64 divided 4 times 3 means it's 48 bytes. 48 bytes means it's uh means it's uh 
12 bytes of tag? How many bytes is a poly 13 of 5 tag? Uh, 16 uh, bytes of tag. And no, the encryption of 32 bytes. I don't know why I had it shorter in there. I guess we're not wrapping at 57 then, because I don't want to wrap the very standard X to 5519 thing. Wait, is the file key supposed to be 16 bytes? No, it can't be, right? Yes, 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 bet you. A 128-bit master file key. Yep. I, not even... Uh, I'm not even encoding my... Doing my... Implementing my spec, right? Woohoo. Now I wish I had that constant, huh? Uh, it's possible this is the only place it needs changing. Yeah, it was. There we go. That's the first Aga encrypted file. Neat. I think I like it. I think this needs to change to something like this. Uh, age-format.org encrypted file version one or something like that because I don't want to make it about, about the tool but about the format but eh, I'll leave that for the IETF fight that is definitely coming and will change little things anyway yeah cheers to the first uh, age encrypted file which is actually the first one because this one is fake. This one is literally just um, random bytes. Uh, yeah, Matt Green offered to make a um, uh, draft a spec out of this. He, he insisted that it's more important to have a format than to have a tool. And I'm not sure I agree. So essentially what's happening is that I'm writing the the tool and he's going to write the um, the ID. <laughs> I, I should print out and email and mail signed copies. You know what? Um, if we're, we're going to make a logo for Age anyway. If anybody that's following the, the stream live, so say today, emails me at this email, I'll send you some uh, Age stickers and some MakeSert stickers um, and uh, maybe a printout of the first uh, Age file. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, that also includes anybody that donated to you Project Alloy to make this happen. Like, send me your, your addresses and I'll spend a day uh, putting stickers in envelopes. If you have an idea for a logo, though, that, that, that I would love. Uh, I need to start making a lot of stickers. You might have noticed that Age is inspired by WireGuard. And WireGuard, I think, maybe 40% of its popularity, it's because everybody has a WireGuard sticker. Everyone! So, yes, that's the plan. Um, no, I haven't implemented the other recipient types, so that's what we're doing next. No, wait, next we're doing parsing of files. And then, actually, chat, what do you want to see? Um, implementing the SSH recipient types or implementing uh, the command line tool, which I think I prefer the recipient types, but you tell me. I'll be right back.
All right? The only vote is for recipients, and that's what my vote is for, too. So that's what's happening. Hmm. Mm. Oh, screw it. Yeah, sure, why not? I have promised SSH, so I have to do SSH today. It was the $3,000 stretch goal. And my climbing gym does close at 8 p.m. And it's 4.30. We can make it. Maybe I'll do all the recipients now and um, uh, file decryption now. And then do the command line um, this evening. Maybe still streaming, but I realize that kind of sucks for um, anybody in Europe. Um, Sorry, um, I recorded, but I also think it's the less interesting part. Yeah, actually, I need some air. So that's the plan. Phone call, just one sec. Let's do this. <clears throat> um, a script, yes, 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 a script. Let's do a script. Um, same file, separate file, one file per recipient, separate files, undecided, undecided, uh, one file per recipient. No, 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 no. I am going to show something I will regret. That will definitely happen. That's just how streaming goes.
I suppose the um, S script one can be a single type uh, that implements both identity and recipient, right? How do we call it if it's both a recipient and an identity? No, it's a real question. I need somebody from chat to suggest something. I'm, I'm getting extremely tired of picking uh, names. It, uh, maybe just recipient and it's both a recipient and an, ident an identity. Yeah, why not? What does the script take? I'm not muted, right? No. Um. Byte slices, byte slices all the way down. Um, maybe export two types uh, and use a single and exported type to do most of the work. Yeah, but what is the uh, name of that? An export type. I mean, I could also not be a smart ass and have separate ones. Yeah, why be, why, why, why be a smart ass and uh, make separate ones? Why? Yeah, no, I, I think I'm just making two separate ones because that's how it's supposed to be, really. Um, provider. Uh, I get it, but at the same time, oh my god, Java. There is no useful um, state to reuse anyway. So I'm not sure there's any value.
<laughs> Is it a problem to take an attacker selected N when Okay, actual cryptography question. Um, let's see. If should I validate the N? An attacker sends me something. Uh, oh yeah, we should check for too large because that's a mm, DOS. Uh, but if we get one that is too small, to the point that basically a script becomes just shadow fifty six. What happens? I can't think of an attack. Uh, well, but... Right, no, no, I'm trying to think if there's an oracle situation where you can send a small n and use the success or not. But, nah. I say we just take the N and just check that it's uh, within um, reason. Must be a power of two. I'm sure the function already checks that. Um, Oh, I'm not gonna let users choose N at all. Uh, I'm just wondering if for interoperability we should accept. Um, I know, I'm looking up my own blog post. I, I realized. Um, scale linearly, okay. Uh, This will take five seconds. Uh, 10 seconds still seems fine. 20 seconds is probably wrong. So I say we cap it at um, three point eight seconds times four seems fine um, so we assert that has to be lower than uh, at most one shift left by 22 okay which is 15 seconds on my machine which is still a lot but you know people might actually want that
this is still enough to um, This actually needs to be configurable because uh, you can imagine using it on a slow ARM machine where you accept ag encrypted files from arbitrary sources and now somebody sends you something with uh, 2 to the 22 as N and you spend this subsequent, I don't know, 10 minutes on that file. That's not okay. Okay, we've got all the pieces. Um, oh, the default is this, um, I suspect. Maybe 100 milliseconds, should it be more? It's file encryption, it should be higher probably. Less than one second though. Uh, asking if we should check for n less than zero uh, only if a script doesn't and if it doesn't yeah no there you go um the difference here is between what we accept from the outside and what we set as the default for what we generate like we need to both pick a default for a wrap and decide what the bounds will accept for unwrap without forcing the entire ecosystem to make the same choice as we do. This is the one place where, uh, where I'll allow some configurability, which ideally, like you haven't seen any other configuration choices uh, so far, and that's exactly the point of Age. Um, but this one, realistically, different clients will want to do different things. Like Escript is actually dependent on what you run, so. This is why we return a struct, probably because we will allow to do new a script identity and then set uh, a script um, uh, max, set max uh, work factor. Anyway, let's just do that. There we go. This is it. Alright, this was all just parsing. Now that we've done the parsing. Um, we do a script with salt and n of the password and just use it straight. Alright, that's kind of easy. Uh, 
Um, people have pointed out to me that the script package is kind of hard to use for password storage because it doesn't have the you know verify password and store password thing that saves the salt automatically. But it is nice for instead exactly what we're doing now as a key derivation function. So probably should grow a couple helper functions. I I I think that would probably be a good thing. Um, Uh, eight, one. R is always eight because the cache line sizes have never changed since the script was designed and one is always one and um, P is always one because we don't want to be doing parallel stuff. Uh, the blog post is what, what the thing you should read if you want to know why. I wrote it because I wanted to know why. And length. What's the length? It's the Chacha 20 poly 1305. That didn't work. Key size. I think there's it. Yeah, we decoded this. Encrypt, yeah. yeah. The default work factor. Um, crap. Uh, one second. How about one second? One second would be 18 because 18 is divided two divided by two. So four sec oh, this is four seconds. So yeah, 18. Why not? And this is why we return a concrete here instead of an um, interface. Until I'm getting tired because I'm coffee pasting more. Um. Uh, 
uh, why the max work factor setter versus export in the field i like I like having setters a little better in case I need to mutate some other state or in case I had pre-computed some stuff, uh, which is not the case here. But in general, I find exporting a field on something that is an implementation that also has other state kind of dirty. Like it's unclear if you're allowed to modify this field or if it's just there for you to see. It's not like a tls.config where you set all the fields and then you pass it on and you can't change it anymore and there's like a clear story there. Um, while a setter is clear and, you know, it will panic. It has an opportunity to panic if you use it wrong. And in general, I find it a better, um, better API, but it, it is uh, subjective. We could also do some validation of n, but we don't have an error field and I'm not sure it's worth having one. All things to think about before uh, making this public, of course. Yep, there we go. Done, I think. Actually, let's just do that. Um, this is because with a password, um, there's a risk. There is an expectation of authentication with a password. Like if I told you that um, even without knowing the secret keys of the other recipients, you can make a new file and encrypt it to those recipients with public keys, you would be like, duh, it, like they're public keys. You can get the public key of other people. Um, and if not, what are you doing? What is your protocol based on? It might be safe, but stop. Um, with Scrypt, if I told you that if I have the private key of the other recipient, I can change the file because I can, I can get the file key and change the actual file even if that's insecure and will leak the file key, doesn't matter, like I'm an attacker. Um, and it will still validate, it will still decrypt for the password, which I don't know, 
you might be surprised. So the way to solve this is either sign the whole file with the password or just make the uh, script recipient only the only recipient. And I don't think people need to encrypt things with multiple passwords anyway. And if they do, they can like, I don't know, make a script foo recipient that just wraps a script and will avoid that check. There we go. Passwords should be strings, right? I feel like passwords should be strings. That's not true. Lies. Um, empty script password. I'm sure this is uh, silly. Ah, no. This took a while. Uh, we might want to set that um, work factor. I mean, two seconds, which is what it's supposed to take, but yes. Much better. I don't know. 
don't know. I feel like if people are using passwords, there are probably going to be bad passwords. So I think the default should be high on the high end. Um, someone in chat was suggesting going to 2 to the 16 for a default. I get portability. Yeah, maybe the command line tool. You know what? The real answer is that the command line tool should automatically measure one second. Um, uh, where do I take a note about that? Um, with a minimum of 2 to the 15. There we go. All right, we have a Nest script example. Let's see it. Doom. I have no idea how to send this to someone. Um, let me put it to a file. Uh, Jonas, do you still want the example or is it okay if I send it like later when, when I have test vectors? I'm sure it's probably broken at this point. Also, it's five. I would like to leave by six for the gym. So what's the weather going to be like? Uh, Oh, actually kind of stable. Cool. Um, yeah, I want to, to, to move on to the SSH, which definitely not necessary for a prototype, but I promised that and you folks donated. So let's do that. Um, okay, actually right now first um, file decryption, file decryption. Uh, don't want to leave things half done. Uh, how does the API work look like? Um, does this work? I don't remember how I wrote the parser. Well, that's convenient. It's nice when you make good APIs for yourself. Future you will thank you. Um, <clears throat> By the way, I wanted to check something. Yeah, cool. I'm getting tired. I definitely need that break. Um,
can hear Thomas screaming. Alright, first we have to derive the key. We have to find an identity that matches. Um. <laughs> I actually summoned uh, Thomas by mentioning him. <laughs> As he was adding a Mac to his header. Yeah, Mac your headers. Who knows what the cryptographer could do? Why not just bump the version when you eventually don't add GCN? Uh, okay, I'm considering this. You do know that the IETF folks will make me add GCN partially because they will want, um, for example, FIPS AGE. No, 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 Camellia over my dead body. Um, I see the point. If I make this easy for them, they will start adding everything. If I, I at least fight a little, even just to add AES, I guess. Uh... I guess have one joint and keep it well oiled, right? I should be comfortable bumping the version. All right, Thomas is making a valid argument. I might rip out the uh, AAD flag. What's the story with uh, X2519? What else does it take to make AGE FIPS compliant? Cursed, cursed question. Um, Script is FIPS compliant. Uh, HKDF is FIPS compliant um, with Shuttle 56, which is FIPS compliant. Um, Well, X25519 is not FIPS compliant, so they will have to add some horrible P256 thing. Um, but that's easy enough. Um, the recipients are intentionally easy to extend because, come on, you might want to view, um, add a, I don't know, KMS, AWS uh, recipient. <sighs> all right, all right. The argument I take the best is that I should be comfortable bumping the version. And once I bump the version, then I can probably just add the GCM because I expect that to happen. Like the whole thing, oh, cha cha uh, 20.1305 is almost as fast as AES GCM uh, if you use uh, AVX512 is kind of not true. Um, Uh, but about 25519 versus uh, P curves, that, that's not a winnable thing. The core extensibility of AGE is around recipients. You can just add whatever recipient you want and redefine it however you want. You just have to wrap a file key. But that's kind of the point, Thomas. You want the KMS, right? You're going to be adding KMS, and I'm fine with that. Um, all right, I'll rip it out. I'll finish this now, commit what we, what I have so far, and then rip that out. Um, now, now we need to do the identities dance. Hmm. 
let's do the blocks instead. Um, you should always pick linear linearity in like, no, wait, this makes no sense. You have to try them all with all of them. Yeah, no, this is stupid. If one of the recipients decrypts correctly and then it turns out to have the wrong file key, fuck it, right? Like, who cares? Something's wrong. I'm not going to recover from that by looking for another recipient. Yes. This should be configurable at some point. Um, but whatever. So this will only work like if the key is wrong, decrypting will fail to authenticate. Yes. Um, This will need better error messages all around. Uh, if file key is now, all right. At this point, we have the file key. Uh, once we have the file key, we need to figure out the header Mac. Uh, 
with the constant time equal. Um, Oh, something this is doing is that it's uh, re decoding and re encoding the um, header before checking the Mac because header Mac here uses the encoding of header. One solution here would be to just keep the row header, which would also work as an optimization when generating it so that we don't serialize it twice. The other solution is to just say yes yes that's a requirement like you have to be able to reserialize that had been terrible in x509 but i think it might even be good here because it enforces um no malleability if another client makes a different version of the header that still parses it will not verify because it doesn't round trip into Marshall. And I know that my own implementation is self-consistent because I have a fuzzer that will check exactly for that. So cool, let's keep it like that. Unless somebody can see how that will go terribly wrong. Um, so we checked the Mac, we checked everything, we have the file key. Now we read the nonce. payload is the reader that the parser returns, which starts right at the right spot. It's a multi-reader that reads first from the buffer of things that had been overread. I'm kind of proud of it. Um, here. It, unwind it unwinds the stuff and then builds a multi-reader from it. Uh, the 20 recipients uh, check is just a sanity check because like if they are a script they each can make you take forever but wait you're not supposed to have more than one script i mean they can all make you take forever anyway um, um which by the way remembers reminds me Same check as above. And again, things just combine perfectly, yes. Snap, everything snaps together.
I suppose this can be a little higher if it's X2519 keys, but eh, we can worry about that another time. Yep, like snap, everything snaps together. Love it, yes. All right, let's make the tests actually. Um, actually round trip. We should probably have a couple of um Well, this one can only be one because that's the point. Okay. Pass. Uh, yeah, this is the one with two X519s. And this is the one with a script, which also decrypts well and 
returns the, the correct stuff. Nice. Let's make this one round trip too and we're done. And then, um, and then, ah, SSH and then climbing. Let's see if we can make SSH fast enough for me to actually go climbing. being asked about the spec at the bottom where I say um, yeah here um, this is HKDF that extracts 32 bytes using the file key, which is 16 bytes um, as the secret and it extracts 32 because the, uh, the HMAC uh, wants uh, 32. Not, not really sure why I could use 16 here as well, but I use 32 everywhere except the file key because the file key like... I suppose that could be 16, it just feels late to change it um, and just too small of a thing. Um, it's 16 because it has to be encoded for every recipient, so, you know, it quickly wastes space around here. Um, everything else, I just used um, 32 because why not? Nice. It round trips as well. Yeah. When you design APIs well, they're easy to use for yourself as well. Nice. Okay, I'm going to take a short break. Uh, and then we did the snapping things together. Um, And then we do SSH and then I go climbing again. All right, be back in like two minutes. This is just another mate and restroom break.
Alrighty. Let's do this. Um, we have Escort, we have everything. Now the SSH recipients. These ones are a little harder. Um, the RSA one is actually kind of easy. Uh, the problem with the SSH ones is that how SSH them itself uses them is by, to do signatures, while we want to use them for encryption. And that's not good. Uh, however, what we're doing here is that um, for RSA, we use OEAP, uh, OAEP, which should probably be safe to use at the same time as the signature schemes. Um, while for ed 519 we first converted to um, X25519, and then we tweak it by running it through X25519 once with a um, tweak, and then again, and then using that key. Uh, now, the first question is the API. Um, how does the SSH package types look like? How do they look like? Public key, okay. This might be it. Actually, no, this does not give us access to the actual underlying stuff. Oh, this is going to be painful. Oh, looks like we can just cast them to rsa.publickey. Uh, yeah, we can just cast them. It's dirty as hell. No way, we can't because there's an intermediate type, can we? Oh, this. There's a interface upgrade for it. This is why you don't return interfaces. Like this thing returns an interface from parse and then it has to make you do the weird upgrade to then access the underlying public key. Uh, what's the type of the at DS at 25519 here? It just returns the 2519 public key. Okay, so I think we can just take the... Um, for the recipient, we can just take that. Um, let's start it by just copying this. Let's start only with the recipient. Um, should there be separate ones for RSA and uh, yeah, there should.
I hate that name, but eh, fine. What? No! Where the hell is that from? Will weird. Uh, okay, so we have that. Um, then public key. We have to assert that I kind of hate this, but I can clearly see that like somebody else suffered through the same. And then we assert that this is a rsa.public key, which I think is necessary because of this. Uh, car alarm. I can't believe car alarms are still legal in uh, in New York. Okay, so this is the incantation that extracts the actual RSA public key. Then once we have the receipt of the key, we I th oh um this syntax is um type assertion 
which when you do it with an interface, it asserts that it has the methods of that interface, which is this interface that uh, has a um, extra method. So you're checking that this inter uh, the, the value inside the interface implements this. And then this instead is actual type. So you're checking that it's actually that type. Um, I think I made this such that public key dot marshall is exactly what we are um, hashing here. Uh, when you see um, what you think of, um, what we all think of uh, SSH public key is actually the type name space and the base 64 of the actual wire encoding. Um, so I'm going to do something extremely dangerous here. Actually, I'm going to diffuse it first. Yeah, no, I don't have one. Um, There we go. So this is base 64. And if we decode it, it has the name followed by the wire encoding. Perfect. So that this is the representation that we're supposed to hash. And it's exactly what gets marshaled. Um, neat. Perfect. So we need. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we need to encode the SHA-256 of that, the first four bytes, as an argument. We don't need any of this stuff. And actually, we also don't use the encrypt stuff. But, well, we will. We'll replace that later. Um, so H is a SHA-256 new. H dot write. Um, oh, God damn it. first four bytes. I have to leave in 15 minutes. I think we will only get to the RSA one and I'll do the at the 519 this evening. Sorry, folks. I know that 519 one is fun, but also it, invo it will involve me like mucking with, I don't even know how, I will have to implement something that lets me do the conversion. So that might be its own like stream. Maybe you'll forgive me for doing that next weekend. We'll see. Um, all right, so we have the identifier here. Um, and then we just use OAP with this uh, label.
I just realized that I encoded agatool.com everywhere, and if I want to switch it to agate format, I'll have to. Uh... Mm. Not the moment to worry about that. Um... Don't you love RSA? The message must be no longer than the length of the public modules, minus twice the hash length, minus a further two. <sighs> Straightforward, really. Alright, hash is shared to 56. Dot new um, rand dot read um, r dot up key. The message is the file key itself, right? Yeah. Uh, it occurs to me that this is the wrong notation. This should like take the actual public key somewhere. Uh, oops. But I think everybody got what I meant there. Yeah, I think this is it. Got just the time to also do uh, identity. This should probably be I dot type. Yeah. Now, same problem. Parse pri uh, signer? No, no, that's bad. Wait, there is no point in using this stuff. I think I'm almost sure that uh, their SSH private keys are just pen files, right? So the command line tool can just go and parse the pen files. And if it's a password passphrase uh, protected, boom, we have this function, um, which returns 
the RSA private key. So, because we just saw it used uh, in here. Well, new signer from key definitely takes um, a pointer to RSA private key. So yeah, we, we just take the RSA private key here. There is no reason to use SSH get here. Well, we should still have the SSH key, but for other reasons, uh, for the... Um, um, Ooh, we are gonna need a method for that. No, we can just do it in unwrap. Eh, I mean, the reason we have this in the, for in the format um, is that that way we can spot which ones are the ones uh, we should try it because it's possible that we don't want to ask the passphrase in advance. But then we will need to know the public key. I'm not sure how I meant for this to go. And also, yeah, in the chat pointing out that modern OpenSSH private keys are not PEM encoded, but like it's not even clear if our SSH package um, supports this. So for now, let's just do this. And then when doing the command line tool, I can think about how to make the UX of that better. For example, also because I don't know how you would have the public key for an encrypted private key. Maybe you can extract it from the encrypted PEM. Maybe the passphrase encrypted PEM has a clear text public key. That would be good. But like that would require a whole order meter. We can do that later. Um, We should still validate it though. So let's have the SSH key anyway. I don't see why this would ever return an error.
for me. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll deal with all of the, the warring parts later. Um, so we have that. Um, Okay, uh, we compute the hash like here. And then we just do a decrypt OAP. Okay, that should do it. Let's add the test. Will this fit in 512 bits? Maybe, maybe not. to give go co uh, kill gopples again
this needs to be a pointer. Getting the pointers wrong is one of the most common errors to do with the Go API and Go Crypto APIs. I'm not super happy about it. This value of error is never used. You are right. Message too long, uh, fine. Uh, boom, it ran trips. Uh, I realized that there's one last issue. Um, the body is probably not, uh, line broken i think yeah it is gym time all right everybody this has been fantastic like actually mm the the chat has been super useful um oh hey there is a real bug in the spec uh um to, 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 the example format the top of format uh wait what Strad, uh, what do you mean? Oh, for the map. Gotcha. Thank you. Boom. There we go. Thank you. All right. Again, woohoo, done. Uh, yeah, thanks to everybody that uh, followed along, that uh, helped out. Thomas, I still owe you to remove the um, um, the AEAD uh, uh, thingy, and I promise I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that today before shipping it. Uh, I'll take a note. Um, There we go. Um, and yeah, if anybody has some final questions, now is the time. You've got the next five minutes. Uh, I'll upload this uh, to YouTube and I'll probably be uh, back online streaming this evening around, let me think. Uh, I also assume it's getting dark. Uh, so let's see. Uh, yeah, the, the webcam was getting bad, wasn't it? Um, I think, yeah, I'll be back uh, uh, online streaming for... Um, uh, let's see. The gym closes. It's 6. It closes at 8. 9 p.m. Uh, New York time. Uh, yeah, 9 p.m. New York time. I'll do uh, two, three hours to put together a um, command line tool so that we have a prototype by uh, by dawn tomorrow and then maybe work on the add to 5519 ssh um, thing it really depends on how complicated it turns out to be any questions going once going twice and i know um, a bunch of people are not going to be around this evening um, sorry about that um, it's gonna be on youtube No more questions? Cool. Yeah. Thank you everyone for following very much. This has been uh, fun uh, for me as I hope it was uh, fun for everyone.
Yeah, and it, it's a race with Strad for the Rust implementation. Bye.